everyone, welcome back to my channel. And if this is the first time you're joining me, my name is Odessa. I'm the mystic intuitive healer. I'm a psychic medium, Reiki master, spiritual coach, and an intuitive tarot card reader. And I am so excited to announce that we've reached 1,000 subscribers. And I cannot thank you guys enough. You have been so supportive on my journey of building this channel, and I've actually connected with a number of you one-on-one -on -one because you book sessions with me, which has been amazing, and I'm like loving all the comments. It just like makes this all worth it, you know? Like you guys are so, so incredible, and I love being able to do these readings for you. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And as a special gift for you guys, I am going to be gifting one of my first 1,000 subscribers a mini reading with me. So if you've already subscribed to the channel, then you're automatically entered into the draw. I'm going to be announcing the winner tomorrow, which is um, March 20th. It's the spring equinox. So you can just look at my community tab and you'll see the winner announcement there. But if this is your first time and you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, there is an opportunity for you guys to win a free reading with me as well. I'm going to be offering a second free reading for any new subscribers. So all you have to do is subscribe to the channel and comment on this video and you'll be entered into the draw and I will be announcing the winner in on um, April 1st, okay? So let's get into this reading. We're gonna be looking at what is the juicy gossip about you guys. And the messages that have been channeling to me are so juicy. <laughs> I am so excited about this reading. So I have three piles for you guys to pick from. Pile number one is partnered with orange calcite. This is a crystal that's used to clear the solar plexus chakra, and it brings about more positivity and joy. It can also give you more like courage and strength. Pile number two is partnered with rhodonite. This is a crystal that's often used for the heart chakra, specifically the high heart chakra and the root chakra. And it can help to um, dissipate any kind of stress. And it also promotes compassion, specifically self-compassion. And then pile number three is partnered with green muscovite. This is also known as green fuchsite. And this is a crystal that partners with the heart chakra and it helps us to alleviate stress and also to release any counterproductive tendencies that we might have in our lives and that can be like a wide range of different things from working too much to working too little you know like it, it's a wide range of things but anything that hasn't been benefiting you can um be like blocking us from our manifestations and green fuchsia can help you to release that so I'm going to give you guys a second to select your pile and I will see you in a moment. Welcome back pile number one and I am so excited to announce if you missed the intro that I've reached a thousand subscribers and as a special thank you to you guys i'm giving away two free mini readings um the first one is for my existing subscribers so if you have subscribed to the channel you're already entered into the draw which will be announced on march 20th 2022 under the community tab on my channel and then the second mini reading is for all new subscribers so if you haven't already subscribed to the channel please do and comment on this video and you'll be entered into the draw for the second mini reading, which will be announced on April 1st, 2022. All right, so I've got your cards here. We're gonna be looking at what the juicy gossip is about you guys. So I've got your orange calcite. I'll just put that aside. Let's see what these cards say. All right, the first card you got is the venom. Then you got the three of wands. 
you got the unicorn and it says indulge your creative, imaginative, and magical side through some form of artistic expression. Interesting. You got the queen of swords. You got the three of wands again. And the hanged man. All right. So pile number one, you've been making some big changes in your life or you're about to, um, the gossip that's going on about you has something to do with you overcoming your self-limiting beliefs or the self-limiting beliefs of others. This Venom card is talking about the shadow self, the ego self, the like, the thoughts that bounce around in our minds um, that can be really critical and oftentimes that like inner critic is actually an amalgamation of a whole bunch of other people's voices, other people's opinions. And oftentimes it's rooted in like our family of origin or like people we grew up around and it can be really critical because it's based on like their own self-limiting beliefs the things that they would love to be able to try and do but aren't able to or an emotional expanse that they're not able to extend to right like empaths go through this all the time where they are highly emotional really loving able to feel things that other people aren't. And oftentimes people like that are sort of placed into families um, by spirit that could really use some guidance. So your parents might be actually way more scientific, much more emotionally removed, even narcissistic, and you might be highly empathetic. And I'm definitely getting the energy of empathy because with the three of wands there's a body of water and then we're also talking about the energy of creation so that's also connected to water which also makes me think that you lean into more of your intuition your creative abilities you're an artist is what i want to say and i think that you've come to a place where you're finally recognizing how badass you are, how amazing you are, how creative you are. You're shielding yourself and you're literally cutting out people that like don't get it. Like if you are going to stand in my way and try and dim my light, I am pushing you out of my life. I am set, asking you to step aside because you know you're a unicorn. This unicorn even has like this glowing orb around their head and the, their horn. And like the, the mythology of the unicorn is connected to the crown chakra, getting messages directly from spirit. That's why there is a horn at the top of their head. Even most times they're um, depicted as the color white, which is also associated with the crown chakra. So you you are um getting these great ideas right you're you might realize you might identify with being psychic or intuitive in nature and you're getting these ideas from spirit you might not you might just you know have a lot of hobbies and things just come quickly and easily to you i also get the feeling that you've done this a lot like because there's in behind the um unicorn there's this image where it almost get, creates the shape of a figure eight and that connects to me for me to reincarnation um having done things over and over and over again to the point where we're able to find balance we've been able to balance that energy in our life and I think that you came into, like, I really want to say that this is likely conflict that you've had with your mom because there's the queen of swords here. And I mean, it doesn't have to be with someone who identifies as being a woman, but um, the energy of the queen of swords 
is linked with the divine feminine. So even if they don't identify as being a woman, they're more in their divine feminine, but it's like the shadow side of the queen of swords, right? With the venom card. So this is somebody who, instead of using their ability to communicate, because the swords are connected to communication, like in an effective way, this queen uses her intellect and her ability to communicate to cut people down like in behind this queen are literally decapitated heads on spikes that's the energy of this queen and i've literally never noticed that in this card ever before this moment um that's the that's what i love about channeling right my guides are always walking me through the cards and pointing out different things to me this was a queen that wanted to cut you down, wanted you to dim your light because this queen did not feel confident next to you. And like the sad thing is that this might have been one of your parents, right? This might have been one of your like your caregivers or like like a, an adult or an elder around you where you're a child and you're full of like magic and like, you know, creative ideas and um, a thirst for experimentation and you're really open-minded. And this queen did not want you to see your true potential because your potential far exceeded anything they felt like they could achieve. The reality is that that isn't true at all. Like you did. Everyone is able to achieve greatness and be able to be in tune with spirit and able to live like their divine purpose so that they can bring about happiness, and joy, and abundance into their life. But to do that, you have to take risks. You have to have faith. You have to, you know, walk by faith, not by sight, right? You have to go into the unknown and do things that don't necessarily make sense to the average person and they definitely don't fit into the matrix paradigm where everyone is supposed to like you know gruel away at a, a nine to five job until you know hopefully somebody notices you and if they don't then well at least hopefully you have medical benefits or something you know like that's no way to live you know that but the queen of swords is fully entrenched in the traditional thinking that most people have about how you create a life for yourself, how you show your importance. And oftentimes this energy is connected to like narcissistic tendencies where you are really ego driven and um, the queen of swords would be somebody who really wanted praise from other people, like constantly being told that they're good enough. But not only that, constantly hearing from their friends, it's mean girl energy. It's like, you're amazing and those people suck. That is shadow energy and it's going to magnetize bad things to you because when you say negative things about other people, you're literally sending them the evil eye. You know, like I'm sure all of you have heard of the evil eye before. You're literally sending the evil eye to anyone you say anything bad about or you think anything bad about. And if that person is highly protected or they are an elevated being like yourself, it backfires. It will backfire. And you have finally come to a place where you are like, you know what? I know who I am. You worked hard on this. The hanged man is talking about you pausing, reconsidering everything in your life. And I'm not getting major goosebumps right now, which is always like a, a really good sign from my guides. You know, you woke up from the slumber, it's, right? Like you woke up, you're not in the matrix anymore. Like you might've had a spiritual awakening. You might've just had an epiphany in your own life where you're like, why am I listening to this person about what I should do with my life and what I should do to make myself happy when it's clear that they are miserable in their life. So why would I think that they're an authority? They don't know anything more than anyone else. 
So I might as well just listen to my intuition because my intuition has constantly been proven right. It's guided me in the right direction. When I've listened to my intuition, I've found more joy. I've connected with more people that I, I really resonate with. And you, you went through a period, because I keep hearing the hermit, the hermit, the hermit, which is another card in tarot, talking about doing self-reflection, going on alone too, really being on your own and having time to like think about what you want out of life. And you have to look at your own shadow energy, right? Because when we are um, constantly faced with people that are being critical, unfortunately, the reality is that like we attract a similar vibration, right? Like-minded people, meaning that if you see the cup is half empty, you're gonna attract a whole bunch of other people that also see the cup is half empty. When you really wanna be around people that see the cup as full, because those are the people that are manifesting at a rapid, rapid, rapid pace. You realize that and you're like, oh my God, this person has never been able to shift their way out of this negative mindset. I've known them for for many of you, your entire lives, and they've always been miserable, and they've always complained, and they've always had problems, and if anything, their life is getting worse and worse and worse and worse and worse, and you are walking away from that, and people are talking. Oh my God, they are talking. They are talking about how amazing you are. They are talking about how brave this was. They are talking about how it's like you literally escaped from like, like uh, imprisonment is the energy I'm getting. Because with this three of wands card, she's climbing up this ladder, like frantically trying to reach a higher level. That is you. You're like, I am out of here. I don't want to deal with this anymore. I don't want to be at the mercy of these negative thoughts anymore. I want to escape it. I don't want to be in the darkness anymore. I want to fully embody my magical self. And some of you actually might be magical. You might be awakening to the fact that you have psychic gifts, you have spiritual gifts, you have magical gifts, you're leaning into that more. And this queen of swords does not understand that at all. Like would never, like it, this is a person that would consider themselves very logical and would probably says like, oh, I, I trust in science, but they don't really know anything about, you know, leading edge science. They definitely don't understand anything about like theoretical physics, which actually backs up a lot of the stuff that um, traditional shamans, healers, mystics have been talking about for centuries. You know, since the beginning of time, you are now dismissing that, you know, even if you don't like fully have a grasp of everything that's going on in your life, whether it has something to do with your spirituality or whether it has something to do with your like job or your, you know, what school you want to go to or whatever you want your life to be, whatever it is that you've been sort of called out to do. I think for many of you, it has to do with creative endeavors, you know, like some of you might want to be full-time artists and like you um, have been discouraged from doing that because it's like, you're never going to be able to make a living doing that. And you're like, well, my heart is telling me that this is what I need to do. So I'm just going to go and try it. And if I have to get a second job, you know, to fuel like or fund my lifestyle so I can continue to do what is really driving me, I will do that. But you are going to, as a result of that decision, not only have great abundance because like these are both three of wands cards, but they have drastically different imagery on them. And in the second one, there is this um, merchant here. So some of you might actually, and I'm getting goosebumps, there's many of you then 
that are actually creating a product. You are creating art and I'm getting that you guys are showing it on social media. Specifically, many of you have successful TikToks. If your TikTok isn't successful yet and you're seeing this reading, don't worry. Just wait. Your ships are coming in. People like something is going to click with the algorithm and all of a sudden, People are going to start taking notice of you. And you. It, it, for some of you, it might be like overnight. It might be like something like you just wake up the next day and you've got like 10,000 subscribers or followers or, you know, like you are an overnight success. And others of you, it might take a little bit more time. It might be like a little at a time. But no matter what, don't get frustrated with that because... When it comes in slow, it's because there you need to um, get kind of like a plan together because there's going to be a big success later on down the road, you know? Like you need to sort of have like your, like let's say you have an Etsy store. You need to kind of like make sure that it's a seamless flow before you have like 10,000 orders. Because if you don't have everything sort of organized like, how you're like what speed it takes you to make the product and like how to organize your packaging and how like how long it takes for like shipping all of that stuff and you have 10,000 orders you are going to have like a tower moment you're going to be in complete crisis so just know that in those moments when things are coming in slow it is for your benefit. You are definitely going in the right direction. Don't think of those delays as something like a sign that you're going in the wrong direction. Now, this Queen of Swords is telling you that it is. She or he is wrong. Okay? They are wrong. You are definitely going in the right direction. And people are noticing and they, they know it. Like the people that know whatever it is that your idea is, even if they don't know what your idea is, they know that you're capable of achieving whatever you set your mind to. You know, like they, they've seen that spark inside you from like the minute they met you. And those that um, have their own spark, you know, those that like love themselves will let you shine because you shining doesn't take anything away from them. Um, but, you know, those that kind of fight you on this really have more of their own shadow work to do. Um, and you just need to like keep facing your true north and just patiently wait for these gorgeous golden ships carrying your like cargo and riches into you. Like because these these ships are like laden with like riches and they're like like really ornately carved like this is this is beautiful and this is really going to cement you into a whole new timeline the the wands here are red and they are also have black stripes which is talking about the root chakra and this is talking about like you've grounded your manifestation into the physical. It's here. You're living it. You're doing it. Your dreams are coming true is what I want to say. And um, once you're in that new timeline, there's nothing that will take you back to that. It doesn't matter how many tantrums or how passive aggressive or toxic the Queen of Swords is. You're going to continue to stay you know, facing your true north, going towards your abundance, like, and honestly, that's going to bring about a huge karmic balancing for this queen, because they are going to have their worst fears realized. And um, people are going to be talking about that as well. And then that's going to create even more chaos for this queen of swords, because they never wanted you to succeed and you're going to succeed. And I think for many of you, it'll be on a public stage. And if this is your mom or someone that you're close with that you like that, they can't just distance themselves from you. Every wrong thing that they ever did to you is going to come back to bite them in the ass, but it's going to, it's not going to 
hurt, they're not going to be hurt the same way they hurt you. What's going to happen is that their ego is going to be destroyed. They are going to be constantly reminded of your success because every person that they run into is going to say, oh my God, I saw, you know, pile ones on TikTok. It was so amazing. You should be so proud. And they're going to be stewing. They're going to be so burning, burning with like um, anger and frustration, not just because you went and did what they didn't want you to, but because they know in their heart of hearts that they could have been part of this and they chose not to. They chose to try and keep you in a place of disempowerment instead of trying to build you up so that you could rise up together. You know, like they, I think have, if they haven't already, they've pushed you almost to the point where you were wanting to have nothing to do with them. And I do think that for many of you, you will get to a point where you're going to want nothing to do with them. Like, but not in a hateful way. It's not going to be like I'm blocking and like deleting your number. Um, like I never want to talk to you again. It's like indifference. Like you're cordial, you're kind, you're nice, you're friendly to them, but you don't let them close to you at all. You don't tell them about your issues. You don't tell them about anything. And as a result of that, they don't get to share in your successes. And for this queen of swords, they really want to be around powerful, beautiful people. And um, you guys will be like getting awards and you'll be going to, you know, special events that they would love to be able to participate in. And you're never going to invite them. Why would you invite them when they were the one that tried to discourage you from doing this all the way along? You're going to be surrounding yourself with all the other amazing people that you have magnetized to on your journey up this ladder that are also stars in their own right. And you guys are going to be like celebrating together. Like it's, it's not going to be a situation where you, um, necessarily see all of the pain that this person or the negative karma that this person ends up experiencing. But just know, like for some of you, when I say this stuff, you might actually feel bad for this person. And I get that, but this is something that this person needs to experience because the life lesson that they are meant to learn is that they need to be excited for other people as well. They need to celebrate other people's victories as much as they celebrate their own, you know, or they need to start celebrating other people's victories so they can understand how to celebrate their own. Like there's a real like blockage in this person. And like, even though it might be hard for them, it is truly an act of love to let them just sort of let go and sit in their pain on their own you know, and not try and shield them from it. Because if you shield them from it, then they'll never be able to have that awakening experience as well, right? They'll never be able to get to a point where they've hit rock bottom, where they want to climb up the ladder, right? We learn the most from the pain, unfortunately. It, it, we really do. We learn the most from the pain because when things are good, we're not motivated to change anything. Right? Why would we want to change anything? Everything's awesome. So the painful experiences really um, can be real teachable moments. All right. Whoa. That was so incredible. Let's get some more details here about like, what are people gossiping about? What is the juicy gossip about pile number one? wanting to come out. What is the juicy gossip about pile number one? Okay, we got a bunch here. Let's see what you guys got. Oh my god. Oh my god. Yes. All right. Yeah, this is totally confirming what I was talking about. I love it. Okay, so Queen of Swords, under the Queen of Swords, hidden motivations could be covert narcissism, which is something that not a lot of people are aware of. Like, because narcissists 
autism is a spectrum. On one end is people that are like mildly self-indulgent to the extreme where they're like full on psychopaths and they're like dangerous to society, right? When I say narcissism, I'm talking about people that are somewhere on that spectrum where they are having a tendency to be manipulative, deceptive, they are choosing to wear a false mask. They are, um, you know, their ego and their like false identity and the praise of others and opinions of others means more than anything else and they'll do anything to get it. And they constantly need that feeding them because they don't know how to give that to themselves and they will lie and deceive people or say have truths. This can be people that put on happy masks where it's like, you know, they're like your best friend to your face and then they're like smack talking you behind your back. That's all on the narcissism spectrum. And one version of narcissism is referred to as covert narcissism. And it's exactly what I was just describing. Somebody who at face value seems like they're the best person you've ever met in your life. But meanwhile, they are gaslighting you and they are doing all kinds of stuff to try and psychologically manipulate you into doing what they want or giving you giving them what they want and and it can be really really toxic and this card has little children here so again it's really reinforcing to me that this is a parental figure or some sort of guardian then in reverse the two cards over here under the three of wands which is talking about um, looking towards the future as well as releasing, right? Because of this three of wands climbing up that ladder. We have the family card in reverse and we have fragmented energy in reverse. So I think that not only did you release your own fragmented energy, you healed yourself. You healed yourself. You released your family. There's something to do with family where you're like, no, this is toxic. And, you know, yes, I was born into this family, but toxic is toxic. And I have other people around me, or if I don't, I'm going to go and find other people that support me and love me and encourage me. And if I have to walk this road alone, that's okay. Because honestly, I've been alone inside this family my entire life. You guys have been doing nothing but trying to like diminish my successes and make me hide my light and you're constantly, you know, causing injury to me, right? Poisoning my body and mind with this venom card and creating an environment of fear, you know? And when we are in a lack mindset, when we are in an energy of fear, we cannot manifest because you you know, your thoughts become things. So if you are thinking, I can't do it, I can't do it, I can't do it, you won't do it. You won't do it because you're telling the universe that you want to fail at that activity, right? Now, there's a whole bunch of like other uh, reasons why things won't work out for you in terms of your life plan. It isn't always because of your mindset. It isn't always because of manifestation. It can also have a lot to do with the lessons you're here to learn. It can have to do with your own karma from this life and past lives, right? We don't always clear up all of our karmic cycles in one life. They like go over and over and over, like rolling from one life to the next, as well as positive karma too, by the way. But you um, really like did the work, you did the healing, you released all of this, you started leaning into your professional endeavors, you have professional assistance. So you either like decided like, I don't want to go to law school or be a doctor, I'm gonna go to theater school, I wanna be an actor, I, I wanna go to Juilliard, I wanna like you, whatever it is, you were doing something that was unconventional to this queen of swords. So, I mean, like, unconventional, like, I'm giving you, like, polar opposites, but, like, it could be something that was still, like, a more 
um, traditional job. It's just not what the Queen of Swords wanted you to do. I do get the energy for many of you that there are a lot of artists, though. Artists, and when I say artists, it's like you could be actually making physical artwork, but you could be a writer, you could be a musician, you're doing something creative. Um, and I think that you've either gone to school or you've started to connect with other people that are doing similar things. And that could just be you connecting with other creators on social media that are doing similar work. And you're starting to create, you know, a little um, community for yourself. And oh my God, this is going to literally bring you into alignment with a new love partner. It could be that you've already met this person. If you're in a happy relationship, it could be that you following, following your bliss brought you into alignment with your current love partner. But if you're single, you got the loving man card. And this is just a signifier of a romantic partner. It doesn't mean that it's going to be a man. It'll be the, the love partner that you're looking for is coming towards you. They are standing on your path. You are walking in the right direction to bring this into your life. So people are like, like this is juicy. Like people are like, I'm getting the energy that for some of you, like they just keep saying aunt, aunt, aunt. That I don't know if you have an aunt that is estranged from this Queen of Swords. This isn't going to resonate for all of you, but I'm going to share this. This candle is going crazy. Um, but <laughs> for some of you, you have an aunt that is estranged from this Queen of Swords as well as the family and has always been portrayed as the black sheep. And you are now going to be finding out like that you're going to come into connection with her. And there's going to be like, there's gossip around that, you know, like where it's, you're going to be flipping the script where there's was gossip about the aunt. Now the gossip is about you, but you are going to then come back into alignment with healthy family members. Like for some of you, it won't be an aunt. It will be somebody else. But whoever those family members were that the toxic people sort of like, were bad mouthing because they might have pushed the healthy people out of their lives, but they might have also been rejected by the healthy people. And then they painted this like twisted story, this like twisted account of events, but you're going to reconnect with healthy like people. And I think that you're going to find new balance with like older mentors is the energy I'm getting. So if it's not other family members that can sort of help heal some of the wounds of this, it'll be like mentors in your field or like maybe there's a hobby or like, you know, you're going to learn from someone who has either more experience or is possibly older than you. And they're really going to help you to also like get even more in alignment with your inner unicorn, but they could be helping you like to, you know, with your creative idea, whatever this, this, um, you know, venture is that you really wanted to indulge in. So let me get, um, a couple final cards. So I'm going to get one advice card from here and then another from this tiny deck. So, um, what would you like, I just want to make sure that I have it right way up. What would you like pile number one to know about the gossip? What would you like pile number one to know or do? Maybe you want them to do something about this gossip. What can you tell? Pile number one. Okay. You got a time to give rather than take. New moon in Virgo. Amazing. Um, and you also got you and your loved ones are safe. New moon in Cancer. Oh my God, I love that. Okay, so first of all, new moon. This is talking about manifesting. This is talking about something new coming into your life. Something is growing. And the the cancer, you know, the, the symbol is the crab. That's talking about an emotional person putting up boundaries, having a shell in place. 
And then new moon in Virgo, that's talking about doing things that are grounded in the physical. Now there's two pieces of advice here. First of all, you need to do self-care. You need to do good things for yourself. Um, it's going to help you to feel more grounded. It's going to help you to heal some of the, the weight that's been on your shoulders and um, sort of like release some of that negative energy because I believe that many of you are empaths and you're probably absorbing a lot of toxic energy. It's really hard to ignore how much toxic energy is on this in this reading. So have a salt bath, go on a walk outside, meditate. All of those things will like really, really help. Or you could go and have a Reiki session done. I'm a Reiki healer. You could um, check out my services on um, my website, odessamall.com. And the other piece of advice here is that you should possibly start investing in like giving of yourself creatively to other people that are um, open to what you're doing. For example, I am doing that by posting these free readings on YouTube, right? I know that I am going to, the energy balance will be um, created, right? You guys are viewing this, but you have also paid me back by liking these videos, commenting, you've shared, some of you have booked me for sessions. You know, like if you give of yourself to healthy people that are not gonna be taking advantage of you, you will be repaid in some form by the universe. You don't have to worry about that at all. And if you're concerned about maybe you have your own family, right? And you're concerned about distancing your children, possibly from like, say their grandmother, or you're worried about the people that you're close with, you don't have to worry. Everyone is safe. So let's get one final card. But one final, there we go. Oh, you got triple moon embracing all aspects of yourself, the divine and the earthly. This is all about triple moon, triple moon goddess. It's talking all about femininity, um, connecting with your, you know, your fiery passion, your inner warrior, but also your inner mother, being in connection with your intuition and your higher self, following your creative vision. Also, focusing on your manifestations because there is all phases of the moon cycles here in the triple moon. That is so beautiful. And it's all about grounding out your ideas into the physical. Just follow that path. Keep thinking about those things. Walking towards that. People's jaws are wagging. <laughs> you know, they have lots to say about this, you know, because it's juicy. I'm going to be honest, this is juicy. But you are coming out looking like a freaking unicorn, right? Like even the hangman is like um, sleeping beauty. You are looking golden, my friend. You don't have to worry about the, you know, thoughts of others at all. It is this queen of swords and the people that are connected to them that are looking very shady. So I hope you guys enjoyed this reading. Um, please subscribe to the channel and comment below so you can be part of the contest that I mentioned. And um, you could share this with other people that might wanna be included as well and help the channel grow and grow and grow. I'm gonna be doing a free mini reading um, as I reach the next thousand. So at 2,000 and 3,000 and 4,000, as we grow and grow, every group of 1,000 new subscribers, I will offer a new free reading. Um, and if anyone wants to book a reading with me, you can go to my website, odessamall.com. I just started offering Akashic Records readings. So you might want to check that out as well. So it was such a pleasure. I am so grateful to know you and I hope you have a great day. Take care. Welcome back pile number two. 
So if you missed the intro, I wanted to let you know that I've reached a thousand subscribers and as a special thank you to all of my existing subscribers and all of my soon to be subscribers, I am offering two free readings. So if you are already a subscriber, you're automatically entered into the draw for the first free reading, which is going to be announced on March 20th, 2022 on my community tab. And if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please do and comment on this video and you'll be entered into the draw for the second reading, which will be announced on April 1st, 2022. All right, so let's get into this reading. Oh my God, like pile number one was so juicy. So I'm so excited to get into your pile. So you pick the row tonight. I'm just gonna set that over there. Let's see what the juicy gossip is. You got the lover, mm, eight of cups, panda, create a sacred space for yourself in your home and or place of work, road runner, keep your sense of humor and don't take things so seriously, five of swords, king of swords, and page of coins. Woo All right. So pile number two, it looks like the juicy gossip about you has something to do with your relationships. The energy that I'm getting from this is that for most of you, it's going to be around a love relationship. But it doesn't have to be romantic necessarily. This could be affecting your friendships or your family, but it is has something to do with someone that you have love for. Um, now, swans mate for life. So the oh, and I just heard twin flame. Okay. So for many of you, this is definitely a romantic relationship, and you have been in a twin flame union with a person who is um, definitely the runner. Oh my God, the road runner. And you guys have been, I'm getting crazy goosebumps. This person is deep in their shadow. They are um, really struggling with the um, intimacy and the connection that is required for relationship to be sustainable. I think that you are the more empathetic of the two of you. Um, if you guys haven't already seen the little, like I did a three minute video where I explain what the difference between a soulmate, a karmic, a twin flame and a divine counterpart are, you might wanna watch that and I'll just link that above and you guys can easily find that. But basically, a twin flame is two souls that have agreed to work together to help each other learn the equal yet opposite lesson. And it's about finding balance, one being more empathetic and the other being more narcissistic. And the empathetic person or the empath, you might even be an empath, needs to learn to love themselves as much as they love others and the narcissistic individual who can be very manipulative or very detached emotionally needs to learn to love others as much as they love themselves. And you have been going back and forth trying to create the balance, right, with this panda and you have finally come to a place where you're like, I cannot deal with this conflict anymore because your um, divine, I wanted to say divine counterpart. Whoa, okay, we need to get more cards, but your twin flame or your former love partner, your love match, if you don't identify with the twin flame journey or union, that's totally okay. Your ex or your soon to be ex or, you know, your person, um, has been like fighting with you and creating conflict with you and has been um, trying to 
create a dynamic where they can come out on top. They have been arguing with you about things that they don't even feel passionate about. They've actually been twisting the truth and saying things like playing devil's advocate to a certain degree um, that they don't even believe just because they want to be right. You know, the five of swords is talking about, you know, petty battles and, and trying to be right just for the sake of being right, even if it doesn't benefit you. And the king of swords can be um, in his light aspects, can be a strong leader who has great communication skills. But like this is clearly somebody who is in their shadow energy when it comes to the king of swords, which means that this is person that is really cutting with their words. They use words as a weapon. They don't communicate clearly. The energy I'm getting is that this is like bullshit baffles brains where it's like where you're in an argument and they just like talk in circles, talk in circles, talk in circles. Before you know it, you're like, I don't even know what we were fighting about, but somehow you're apologizing. It's a, it's a coercion technique that people that aren't narcissistic, to be perfectly honest, and that's a spectrum. It's, I'm not saying that anyone is diagnosable narcissist. Narcissism is a spectrum, just like anything else. On one end of the spectrum is someone who is like mildly, um, you know, self-indulgent to the extreme where they're like a danger to society. Your person is somewhere on that spectrum and there's been a lot of conflict and they just took every opportunity they could to try and cut you down and manipulate your mind. So gaslighting for sure. There's a lot of energy of gaslighting. And the reason for that is because you are this bright light and they are trying to present themselves as this stable king, but in reality, they're actually a page, which is, and this is the page of coins. So this person might still be like a, feel like in all areas of their life that they're at an early stage of development. Like they don't have their money where they want it to be. They don't have the career that they want. They're still building and working. But the energy I'm getting is that they don't have a practical plan. Right. So like they have they have the potential. You see the potential in them. You see the light in them. But it's just like they don't see that light. Right. There's the sun rising here. But then here in this card, there is this moon and it's like a blood moon, which is like like fueled with Mars energy, which is all about like fighting and conflict. And this is the Eight of Cups. So what I'm driving at here is it looks like you have finally decided to walk away from your person or your twin flame. If that is something that um, you believe in, that makes sense to you, that you connect with, your lead, you've walked away from this, this conflict and people are noticing and they are talking. They are, the energy that I'm getting is that they see you as this um, rare beauty, that you are very balanced in your energy. Like I see you as this panda where you have balanced divine feminine and divine masculine energy. The um, white and the black coloration indicates that. And this is talking about creating a sacred space for yourself at your home and your place of work. You've decided, you're like, I don't want to deal with the conflict anymore. I get the energy for many of you that this person was so in their shadow that when there would be conflict, they would like incessantly text you when you were at work or call you incessantly at work or like just want you to put everything else aside for them but they would never do that for you. And they were never happy for you when you had successes. They never wanted you to rise above anything. They never wanted you to shine your light because when you shone your light, it made them feel like they were broken in some way. And it's because you're like, I'm getting the energy that for many of you, you're natural healers. Now that doesn't mean that you do that as a career, this could mean that you are um, like 
that's just part of your energy. You know, when you're around people, you might be one of those people that finds that people like you'll sit down on a bench and then all of a sudden the, somebody will come and sit next to you and want to talk to you and like, or you're like on the subway and people want to talk to you. And it doesn't matter if you have headphones on. I'm one of these people. I can have headphones on. I can have sunglasses on. I can have my nose in a book and somebody will still come up and want to talk to me. And you're one of those people too. That's the energy I'm getting. It's you just radiate this light and people are magnetized to it. And they know that just by being in your presence, they can heal. They might not know it on a cognitive level. Their soul knows this. And you decided that you were like, I'm having, an, I've had enough of this. Like I want to rise above. Um, it's like this card here. We've got Osiris. We've got Isis and we've got Seth. So Seth is Osiris's brother. He murdered him. You know, it, there's a gruesome description of what he did with the body. But basically, Isis had to go and reassemble Osiris, who is the symbol of the sun. And here she is after the murder has taken place and she is weeping. You were like, all I wanted to do was help you to rise. All I wanted you to do was come and into the sun with me. And you just wanna stay in the darkness. This person might have substance abuse issues that's coming forward to me, but they might just have addictive behavior in any capacity. It doesn't mean that they're doing something like drinking or doing drugs or something like that. They could be working too much. They could be going to the gym too much. They could just be like, they could be doing nothing. They could be like sitting on the couch and just playing video games, like, and like not going out and like taking action on their own goals. And I also get the sense that they were like in and out, in and out, in and out, right? With this road runner, like they're the runner. And at one point you were the chaser, right? You were the chaser, but no more. There's something that's shifted inside you and now you have this balanced energy and you are now um, walking away from this. You might have had a solid foundation with this person at some point, like because the Eight of Cups is talking about there being something that you are leaving behind. You know, the cups aren't spilled over. There is something like you might have been married. You might have children together, but you were like, no more conflict. Like, I, I'm walking away from this Mars energy. I'm walking away from the fighting. If you're not ready to be my forever partner, if you're not ready to rise above and, and seek the light with me, then I have to go in on my own. I have to walk away from this because it's just too painful. It's too painful and it's taking me away from like what I'm supposed to do, right? And people are commending you. Like they might not be saying this to your face because I'm getting the energy that for a lot of you, there's just been rumblings of this. Like if you've separated from someone, this is a, like a recent thing or you've kept it really hush hush. But like, I want you to know that there's a lot of people that are really proud of you. And specifically, there is a large number of women that, because I keep hearing like, like so many voices of women saying they did the right thing. Oh my God, I'm so proud of them. Like, I wish that I had made a hard decision like that, you know, 20 years earlier in my own life. Like, you're giving hope to other people. I don't know if you recognize that, you know, like, because when we're in this, kind of dynamic. I've been here, man. I've lived this. And when you're in this dynamic, you don't recognize um, the kind of, you know, like teachable lesson this can be for others watching you. You can be a real role model to others. You know, you're in it. You're in the pain. You're in like the suffering. And like you might have lost a lot, right? With the Eight of Cups, you might have financially lost. You might have had to walk away from friends and family. And you're in your own suffering. The candle's going crazy again. Like, yeah, you've lost something. And it's been really hard. 
And so you're in that energy, you're in that mindset, but I want you to know that there are other people that are noticing what's going on and they are so proud of you. And that one day, I think once you're out of this energy, one day very soon, I'm being told, you're going to reconnect or you're going to connect with these people and they're going to tell you. Like right now, they are, there's no way, like there might have been some of you where you've got a, a good solid group of girlfriends is what I want to say, where they've come together and like, they're helping you through this and like you have a sisterhood is what I want to say. And, or it could be a brotherhood or it could be just like a, a, like a celebration of close friends. Like it could be any people that are your like chosen family coming together with you to help you through this and like championing you. But if you don't have that, they're waiting, right? Like they're just on the outskirts. Um, sometimes people feel nervous, like especially if this is more of an acquaintance than a close friend. Sometimes people feel nervous to actually reveal their emotions and and everything happens in divine timing. So there's, there's some reason why you might be alone right now and oftentimes that's to give us an opportunity for inner reflection because then you get even more in balance. And when you're in balance, then you are able to like connect with your higher self, right? Or your spirit guides, your ancestors on a deeper level. So let's find out more about, um, what is the gossip about pile number two? I want the juiciest gossip about pile number two. What is going on with them? Okay, I'm gonna get a couple more cards. Oops. What is the juiciest gossip? Love it! Okay, amazing. So let's see. All right. Yes! Oh my God. I love this. Okay, so the like it's like everything I was just talking about. Like people are noticing and they are talking about how you have really come into alignment and you're following your bliss, and you're listening your to your intuition, you're manifesting the life that you want, you are working towards happy, having your happy success. For many of you, you've had a glow up and people are really, really noticing that. They're like really, um, because I keep hearing somebody say they look so good. They look so good. And um, I think that you've put a lot of planning and action into this next phase of your life. For some of you, you might have had to, unfortunately, had to plan the exit from this relationship. But you, if you haven't already exited, you're going to be successful. I want you to know that. Okay. You don't have to be afraid. You're going to be successful. And for those of you who have already left, um, and walked into this new, the unknown, right? You walked into the vast universe. You like, and right underneath the eight of cups, you walked into the vast universe. You had no idea where this was going to end for you. Like you had no idea where is this leading you? You were just following your heart with your higher self. You know, you just got into to connection with that. It was time is what I'm hearing. You, it was time for you to open and expand your heart chakra and your person was not there. They were not ready to do that. They're in this consciousness of lack, right? Which is fully on the energy of Seth which is all about that shadow realm, dark energy. This is, this is somebody who could be given everything and they were, you know, my guides are acknowledging that you gave them everything that they are, will regret this, that you're the, you're, you're the best person that they could have ever hoped to be with. And you are walking away from them. And if they get their act together, then there's a chance that things could turn around because there is the chance that a twin flame can ascend to a divine counterpart, but only if both people are doing the healing. If they don't, then they have another path to walk down and you don't have to worry that you will find a, a balanced partnership. Like you will find that true love where it's like 
better than anything that you had with this person because it'll be like fulfilling. They could be given a pile of money and all the love in the world and their heart would still be made of stone because they don't love themselves. And you just need to keep moving forward with your plans and follow your heart because you're being guided towards a professional assistant of some kind. So this could be you um, going to back to school or getting a new job or coming into alignment with some professional that might be able to help you. I mean, like the like one example that's coming to mind is you want to start working out and you meet a personal trainer, like you meet a personal trainer and they're like, hey, you should try out my gym or like something like that. Like it could be like you meet a, um, a psychologist, you meet some sort of spiritual coach, you meet like, it could be anyone, but the, the professional assistants can also be talking about information that's coming through to you. So it could be like, you find the perfect author, like, and their books really speak to you, or a, an artist and their work speaks to you, and that could be like a visual artist, that could be a musician, but you're gonna be given some assistance um, in the physical realm, that's really being, being, um, like told to me, um, with like a lot of passion that it's in the physical realm. It's not just spiritual. So it's not, you have all of your guides and angels that are helping you at all times, but this is going to be something happening in the real world. And it's going to help you to continue to, you know, discover who you are, right? Like to discover that you are a baddie, that you're fierce, that you can like accomplish so much. And I'm also being told that you have a lot of spiritual gifts that are going to either start to heighten or they're going to be revealed to you. Like that is really common. When we like close out like hard cycles, and you're nearing the end of a cycle with this eight, right? Like it's nine, 10, you're done. Um, is the, like, it's that catalyst for us to have like an up leveling of spiritual gifts. And the reason we're cut off from them is because if we had access to them, we would sidestep a lot of lessons, right? Because we'd have the wisdom to know better, but like, you need to learn this lesson for other pieces of the puzzle to fall into place. Like everything happens for a reason. You have free will, right? Um, but all of the events that are coming to you are being presented to you for a reason. And it's what you do with them, right? They'll lead you down one path or another. It's kind of like a choose your own adventure. And I don't know if you guys are familiar with, but in the eighties, they had these books, choose your own adventure. And you would, it was a storyline and like, you'd get to a certain point and it would say, okay, are you going to take path right? Or are you going to take path left? And you would like pick a path and like, it might lead you to a page that said, oh no, you've like, you're in the swamp and you're sinking in quicksand. And then you might choose another path and that page will like continue the story on, right? Like that's kind of like life. <laughs> you know, like it might turn out positive, it might turn out negative. Either way, you're gonna learn a lesson from it and it's gonna be beneficial to you. Um, that's where your free will comes into play. But you have a lot of wisdom that is being channeled to you from your higher self. Your higher self is the version of you on the other side that remembers the totality of who you are, not who you are just in this life, but all your lives. So like, you know, like, and if I really encourage you guys to like, if you're interested in learning more about your past lives, then um, dive into that. I just started doing Akashic Records readings, actually, um, and you can check that out at my website, odessamall.com, because, like, that was a game changer for me. Like, once I started to remember past lives and have, like, you know, meditative experiences in those past lives, I realized what a bad bitch I am. I'm like, I'm not taking anybody's crap anymore. Like, oh, no way. Like, I am, like, too fierce for that. You'll have that same experience, and it makes it so easy to disconnect. 
Not only that, then you recognize that you're an infinite being and you live forever. So even if this person runs away from you now, eventually you'll be brought back together. Maybe in this life, it may not be, right? But either way, you're they're never going to be gone forever. So let me get a couple final cards for you guys. So what um, advice do you have for pile number two in regards to this situation? You, I'm being guided to this happy success. This person's palms are glowing. So if you practice Reiki, you should try that to clear some of the energy because you can absorb a lot of residual low vibrational energy from negative people. And you can have salt baths. You can meditate to get rid of some of that. Um, yeah, or you can go and see a Reiki healer. Um, I'm a Reiki healer. You can check that out on my website as well. Okay, what else do we got here? Yeah, you just got a time for healing, balsamic moon. So it's definitely time for you to work on self-care, having quiet time to do the things that you love because this person kept you in this cycle of constant anxiety and like constantly having to um, react to their um, projections, right? Because they would like project onto you all of the things that they were actually feeling shame about when they looked at themselves. And you were, it was like, I just see somebody like having like a hundred tennis balls thrown at them all at the same time. And they're trying to hit all of them with one tennis racket. You know, like you just need to like give yourself time to do some self care. And it doesn't, you know, we all have different time restraints on our schedules. So even if you can find five minutes, like even if it's like literally you have to lock yourself in the bathroom for five minutes to just breathe, do that, do that. Do something nice for yourself. Like get, do your nails. Like even if it's your, you do your nails at home. That's fine. What's wrong with that? Buy the foods that you love, right? Um, even if it's junk food, who cares? If it makes you feel good, eat it. You know, everything is in moderation, but it's okay to indulge. The universe wants you to be happy and wants you to indulge and, and find pleasure in all of the things that are here on earth. That's part of the earthly experience, right? Like do those things. Just allow yourself to focus on you for a change because I think you focus on others a lot. So what other piece of advice do you have for pile number two? Yeah. Prosperity lies ahead, new moon in Taurus, which is talking all about a new manifestation. We, um, new moons are talking about new things coming into our life. You are going to be very prosperous. You're going to be in alignment. Taurus, the bull, um, that's talking all about being able to, you know, really um, fight your battles and really take on any opponent, right? Um, you're going to be victorious and you're going to find balanced partnership. You're going to find balanced love in all areas of your life. And the fastest way to get to that point is to love yourself and do this healing. You know, like that, it, it, I know that that can feel like lonely, right? But if you give yourself a chance to focus on this healing, you'll start to actually really enjoy your own company and you'll really savor that time, right? To be able to work on your own passions. And you might not have any passions right now. You might not know what your passions are, but you can figure it out, right? That's where this professional assistance comes in and the planning and action comes in. And people are seeing this, like they think of you as this like, abundant goddess, right? Like you are the swan in this scenario. No one thinks you made the wrong decision. Everyone thinks that this person was toxic. Anyone who is telling you otherwise is what I would refer to as a flying monkey and they are justifying their own bad decisions by trying to force you into the same bad decisions. So 
people that are in toxic relationships that are still currently in toxic relationships will have a hard time um, supporting you leaving a toxic relationship if they're still in their shadow energy because you leaving a toxic relationship makes them feel shame for staying in the toxic relationship. It has actually nothing to do with you. It has everything to do with them. So just remember that they, they probably, if they're defending the bad actions of your person and they are trying to push you into a situation that is negative for you, it is part of their own shadow, that their own ego self that they need to battle. It isn't because of you, because you're doing the right thing. You are like doing more than the right thing. You are completely balanced. So what final piece of advice? Okay, you got power symbol, cleanse, purify, and protect the physical body. And then there's the symbol for Chuku Ray, which is literally the Reiki symbol for power. That's putting energy in. Whoa, amplifying energy. And that's what I was talking about. Get Reiki, get Reiki, get Reiki, get Reiki. Do it on yourself. Go on TikTok. There's people doing free Reiki sessions on TikTok where, and Reiki can be performed distance Reiki. All of my sessions are distance Reiki sessions. And um, because energy is not bound by time or space. So I recommend Reiki. But you could also have a cleansing salt bath, a, a ritual bath, um, put in some essential oils, go on a walk outside, um, cleanse your space, you know, like you can use sound clearing, you can use smoke clearing, you can use words of affirmation and prayer to clear your space, you can work out, all of those things are really, really going to help you. And before you know it, you're going to be like such, like in such a different place and you're going to feel like so empowered that, you know, you're really going to look at this from a totally different perspective, right? It's like, cause I just keep seeing here, there's a shadow of Osiris here rising up to the heavens. Like you're, and this lover, this swan is taking to flight. You're going to see everything from a higher perspective. Oh my God. So if you guys enjoyed this reading, please subscribe to the channel and comment below so you can be part of the contest for a free reading. Um, you could share this with somebody else who might want to participate as well. And if any of you guys are interested in having a reading with me or doing a Reiki session, go to my website, odessamall.com and you'll find out all of the information there. Thank you so much for supporting my channel. I am so thrilled to connect with you guys and I can't wait to do another reading for you soon. So take care. Hi, pile number three. All right, so I wanted to let you know in case you missed the intro that I've reached a thousand subscribers and as a thank you to my existing subscribers as well as my soon to be subscribers, I'm giving away two free mini readings. So if you've already subscribed to the channel, you're automatically entered into the draw for the first free reading which will be announced on March 20th, 2022 on my channel. Uh, just look at the community tab on March 20th and I will announce the winner there. And if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please do and comment below and you can be entered in to win the second free reading, which will be announced on April 1st, 2022. All right, so we're gonna be looking at what the juicy gossip is about you guys. So let's find out. I'm just gonna put the green fuchsite there. Let's see what you guys got. You got the judge, five of wands. You got the mouse. You're overlooking some important details, so pay close attention to what's going on and the blue heron make a stand for what you believe in and do what feels right in spite of any judgment or disapproval from others you also got the four of swords queen of coins and the three of cups 
All right. So pile number three, you guys have gone through a major transformation. I'm not sure if it was with a family member, friends, or whether this was possibly in a romantic partnership, but in the past, and I just heard recent. So in the recent past, you were in a position where there was a lot of people fighting around you. They could have been fighting with you. They could have just been fighting around you because the five of wands is talking about conflicts and battles. Um, it can be conflicts of opinion. Sometimes they are just like sparring matches where it's like two people that like to debate about particular issues that can get kind of fiery about it. But sometimes it's like true, like drop down, you know, fights. Like where it could be like really throwing really harsh words back and forth. It could be even more than that. Hopefully not, but it could be any extreme of conflict. And you were in a position where you had felt like your hands were kind of tied. Like you were like this four of swords. Like this, the Four of Swords is talking about rest and recuperation, but the power of this particular Four of Swords is the fact that there is this powerful, um, this is Fenrir, which is from Norse mythology. And Fenrir was a wolf, Loki's child, and very powerful, powerful enough to be able to face off against Odin, the Allfather, and be able to uh, swallow the sun. So it's pretty, pretty, pretty intense energy. And um, he is bound here. And uh, there is a sword actually piercing through his entire mouth. So that is telling me that you felt really bound. Even though you're powerful, you felt really bound. And, you know, the energy that was around you, this could have been like in any dynamic, but it definitely feels like it was like close to you. So it's either like this, it could be in a work environment even, where like you are being stifled. There's all this conflict and chaos going on around you and you're not able to speak up and really show your power. You are sort of overwhelmed by what's going on around you and you're having to shrink, like be the mouse. You're supposed to be like, you know, you're, you're being caused to like be small, be silent and just sort of be watching all the time, afraid, right? That you're going to be like caught by the, the cat, right? I'm just getting the strong energy that there were a lot of manipulative people around you that were harshly judging you with this judge card. And there's the squares that are black and the squares that are white. And um, even these images here too, this feels more like moon energy. This feels more like sun energy, um, which is like the divine masculine, the divine feminine, the shadow self, and like the light self, which when I say that, I'm like talking about like the, like the sun, like what we show the world and then what we keep hidden. And um, because in, as, in astrology, that's what like, your sun sign is like what you show the world. Your moon sign is like what is hidden as well. So, and then it could be the divine feminine and the divine masculine. I'm not sure if I already said that, but <laughs> um, there's like a, there's a contrast here is what I'm getting at. And I feel like, you know, the energy I'm getting to is that there was a power imbalance and it was between like, you know, two groups and one being the mi a minority, or it could even be along gender lines, right? Um, and you finally got to a position where I believe you even possibly partnered with other people that are like-minded, like this Three of Cups. Um, the Three of Cups is talking about coming together and teamwork, and it's talking about celebration as well. There's three women on this card. And you also got the queen of coins. So this could very well be 
you were in a position where you were being underestimated, you were being controlled, there was conflict all around you, you were being tied and bound, you couldn't show your power. You know, if you were, if this had to do with gender roles, this could be like you were being forced into a traditional like feminine role or a traditional masculine role. And like that was, you know, just uh, contrary to who you are naturally. And you broke free of that by partnering with other people that were having the same experience. And you came together and you guys were like standing for what you believe in because the blue heron card says make a stand for what you believe in. Do what feels right in spite of the judgment or disapproval of others. And you're standing up. And you possibly, I mean, if this is in the workplace, you might have left this work environment. You're starting your own business with a couple of people that are like-minded to you. And you're creating success. Like, everyone thought, no, 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 no. This person, pile number three, is always going to be a mouse. They're always going to be a mouse. But meanwhile, they didn't realize that you have this fire inside you. You have an inner wolf inside you. And wolves are pack animals. They hunt together. They are more productive with others that are like-minded, like them. And you did that. And then you all have transformed into this blue heron, which is a symbol of health, good luck. And birds in general are a symbol of looking at things from a higher perspective. Um, herons are also deeply connected to their intuition because they um, hunt for fish, right? And fish, water, it's connected to your intuition. So you might have actually had like an epiphany, right? Like I'm her dream just now. So you might have had like an actual dream where you woke up from a dream and you were like, oh my God, that's a great idea. I should do something with that. And you talk to a, a couple of friends and you guys started this business together. And whatever it is that you're doing, I feel like it's directly in opposition of these people and they are scheming. Now, if you didn't have a sleep dream, you might've had a daydream about whatever it is you were going to do, but you have done it. You're launching it. It's happening. Or at least you're talking about it. Something is in the works for this. And people are noticing, and the people that you left behind that were trying to keep you as the mouse, um, they're fuming. <laughs> because they know that the writing is on the wall for them. They always were trying to keep you in your place and keep you feeling small because they knew that you were brilliant, that you had great ideas. They didn't understand where these ideas were even coming from, but they knew you could achieve it. And they didn't have anything like that because they're deep in their shadow. They're fully invested in the matrix and like, you know, trying to play by the rules and the rules of society in many circles are about lies and deception and thievery and like, you know, congratulating people for their accomplishments, even if it's harming others, you know, like it's not positive energy and it's not good for society. It's not good for humans. It's not good for the earth either or any of the other living things that are on this planet with us. You caught that and you've completely connected with your own knowledge and wisdom and you've shed your skin on this queen of coins card here you've got this giant snake and snakes are a symbol of rebirth because they shed their skin the ouroboros which is the snake eating its own tail is talking about the never-ending cycles of life be it um reincarnation but also the cycles of the the um seasons and the cycles of the the days like sun to night and and all like the tides coming in and out like everything is in constant um cycl cyclical motion it's going in a circle right and um the queen of coins otherwise known as the queen of pentacles is connected with the energy of mother earth and being able to manifest anything that you want you are doing that. You are creating that. 
And I think you're really seeing things like from a different perspective. Whereas at one point, I think that you were afraid of these people. Like on this card, these are all crusaders. They're all knights. Um, and I think that you were afraid of these people. And I think that for many of you, many of the women out there, these were men in high positions, high powered positions mansplaining to you and manspreading and doing all of the things that men can do and uh, really tying you up. And I think that you have, like, I cannot deny the fact that on this side, there's very masculine energy. And on that side, there's very feminine energy. And the reading was moving towards your emancipation, which is into the divine feminine. Doesn't mean you're a woman. It means that you're moving into the energy of being in tune with the cycles of life, creation, being in tune with your intuition and your psychic abilities, like compassion, empathy, all of that. That's all divine feminine. Moving away from this fiery Mars energy of like battle, right? And so you now, I think, see the, the battles of these people that have initially really intimidated you almost like child's play is what I want to say. Like when you look at it now, you're like, yeah, that's cute. They um, are deep in their shadow and like it's almost like you can laugh at it, right? Because you you realize that you were the the most powerful being all along all you had to do was recognize it and likewise with the other people that you're working with whether they're you know however they identify it it's irrelevant um the all of you have come together and you're rising above so that is so exciting i love this and you're speaking your truth you started to speak your truth because um, there's like the blue heron here. The background for the mouse card is also blue. And then the predominant color for this four of swords is also blue. And blue is connected to the throat chakra, which is all about communication. So you might actually have started something where you're actively communicating about possibly this could be even social justice. You could be talking about a, a cause that you really believe in. And um, you're putting yourself out there in a real way. And it could be a blog. It could be, you know, you have some other social media platform, right? Um, it could just be you getting together with people in your community and really doing like grassroots work, you know, like, um, organizing people, you know, it could be like trying to get people to register to vote. It could be anything. Like I was saying before, it could also be a business, but you and the people that you're doing this with have risen above their shadow energy. Cause I'm like being drawn here to the fact that these women are dancing on top of these Lotus flowers and Lotus flowers are a symbol of growth, the ever unfolding lotus, talking about our spiritual evolution. And they grow up out of the murky and muddy waters, signifying that we have to dive into those shadow realms and look at like the nastier aspects of all things, including ourselves, to really be able to be balanced. And that's what it's, it's all about. Now, like I keep, getting drawn back to you have a cause right because the judge you are like you're drawing a line in the sand like there's something that you're really feeling passionate about and it's and it has something to do with liberation you're liberating possibly yourself it could be other people so let's see what else can you tell me about uh the juicy gossip about yeah this is so crazy like today the cards have been so on point where they've been like falling where um they're meant like how they're supposed to connect with the other cards which is <laughs> not typical for me okay i think we're good let's go with this for now 
Oh my God. Yes, yes, yes. This is so crazy. Okay. So. So over here, the first two cards that came out are dark thoughts and fear, right? This is why, like, the juicy gossip is that, like, the people that used to be battling you are gossiping about your success, your evolution, your transformation, and they are terrified, like I was saying before, that you are going to take away business from them or reveal them, right? Like, if this was like an old work environment, it could be that they're afraid that you're gonna take away all their existing clients and they're gonna like, their business is gonna suffer. If it was like a relationship, they could be afraid that you're gonna reveal how toxic and confused they really are, right? With the dark thoughts. For some of you, you might have been dealing with people that are like, covert narcissist like and a covert narcissist is like somebody who puts on a false mask they present themselves like they're your best friend they're like the person that's like gonna be there to help you move or like you know move a couch or like you know help you pick up groceries or whatever but there's always a price and they have a tendency to um twist their words and eventually they reveal themselves for who they really are, which is somebody who is manipulative and will use any means necessary to get what they want. And really they do that because they're totally confused. They're in their shadow. They aren't balanced. They don't understand that there's enough for everyone. They don't like they, they're in fear mindset. So they're constantly thinking that if somebody else has success, it's going to take away success from them. And because they think about that and think about that and think about that, they create that in their reality because our thoughts become things. And um, you might have been in a situation where possibly that's how you were in this four of swords energy all tied up. Maybe you were um, leaning into that your mindset as well and it made you feel small and afraid but you walked your way out of it and they are still in this stuck energy and they are really afraid that they're never gonna be able to move out of it and you have you looked up out of this mud and saw that rainbow and you're like I'm gonna find that alignment rainbows are connected to among many things, but their one connection is to the chakra system, the seven chakras, and it's talking about balance. Um, and you got the back and forth card. So people are gossiping about how you found balance, but like the things that they're saying is like, they're amazing. Like if they're, these people like are gonna have a really hard time finding anything negative to say about you because what you've been doing is incredible. You've been finding balance. You created those new and supportive connections, right? Like I was saying before with the three of cups, you then started to use your creative endeavors to create a new beginning. Um, so like I was saying before, like maybe you have a blog, maybe you have a business, maybe this is just like a hobby. Like you just started getting together with a bunch of people that also like doing the same things as you because these people are painting and then there's also a blank canvas, um, on an easel in this card and you guys are, are connecting and you're sharing ideas and like you're helping each other to blossom into a you know different version of your life you know have it you're gonna be a baby again starting with fresh eyes to to be able to grow a new life for yourself um you know but you're in alignment this baby is glowing there's like a halo around this this baby like you're enlightened you know you have the wisdom of being an adult but you have the wonder and the optimism of being a child. And there's all this, there's, first of all, there is a um, gateway here, a portal 
for you to go down a different path and all of these flowers in full bloom are talking about this growth and all of these are different opportunities that are available to you. Some of them are gonna be in financial realms. Some of them will be creative realms. Others are gonna be in the realm of love and family. Because you've got the true love card and the family card. So this is talking about you loving yourself unconditionally and when you love yourself unconditionally like really love yourself like where you can look in the mirror and you're like you are amazing you are gorgeous you are intelligent you can literally accomplish anything i am so glad that i am you that's when you start to magnetize other people towards you that not only see themselves that way, but they see you that way, right? Because like-minded people, your, your thoughts become things, you're a vibrational match. Like, like these are not just words, these are like guideposts to all of you guys on how you can create a better life for yourself. Finding like-minded people means that if you want a, an abundant life that's full of positivity, surround yourself with people that think positive thoughts. It doesn't mean that shitty things don't happen. Bad stuff happens, right? Like we've all been there. That's part of working through these lessons. Um, we learn the most from the pain, unfortunately. That is the way it works because if everything was perfect all the time, we would never be motivated to change anything. Why would you want to change anything if you're blissfully happy all the time? Um, we have to experience pain because that helps us to grow. And it's all about how you overcome that, right? Are you going to overcome it with bitterness? Well, then you're going to stay in this lack mindset, just stumbling around in this labyrinth like these people. If you grow beyond this and you rise up with love for yourself and others, then you're going to be gifted with that as well. And this, it's going to affect your family if it hasn't already affected your family. This could be like new opportunities for you to have a family. It could be new opportunities for you to grow your family or just have a stronger bond with your family. It might be like, oh, well, I was working tirelessly at like four different jobs and then all of a sudden I decided I'm going to do this like side hustle with my friends and all of a sudden it explodes and then you don't have to work for these horrible low vibrational people that don't appreciate you anymore. You only have to work part time and you get to spend all that extra time with your family, right? Like ask the universe for what you want because they want you to be happy. So ask them for what you want and believe that it can be yours. And that's what you've done. And these people are like, oh my God, they're bitter. I'll be honest. <laughs> they're bitter. They're definitely bitter that you were able to work your way out of this because they think that you think that you're better than them now. And the reality is you don't think about them at all. <laughs> Which is like, you know, like the truth of it is like, that's fine. You don't have to think about them, you know, and you don't need to feel bad about that. They are continuously creating this loop of failure for them because all they keep doing instead of thinking like, oh my God, pile number three created this business for themselves. I'm so excited for them. This is so amazing. If they can do it, it means I can do it too. No, they're thinking, well, they learned everything they know from me and if they hadn't known me, they wouldn't even have this success, but do I get any credit? No, they just keep succeeding, succeeding, succeeding. I keep failing, failing, failing. But it's like, okay, if you want to keep failing, 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 and you want pile number three to keep succeeding, 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 we can make that happen. You know, like, <laughs> they have no idea that because of their lack of balance, because they're truly just in the darkness, that they're creating, it's a self-fulfilling prophecy, right? They're creating their own misery, which is so incredibly sad. So if you guys haven't met possibly like your true love or, you know, like your life partner, 
you might also be working towards that and people are talking about that. Some of you have already met this person and there's some juicy gossip about you meeting the love of your life. Maybe this is somebody that you were working with that all of a sudden it turned into a romance. Maybe somebody, they could be gossiping about you like expanding on your family though as well, right? There might be some gossip, maybe you haven't revealed that you're expecting. And you know, there's this little like whispers, like people couldn't keep their mouths shut because they were so excited for you because you did get the family card and the New Beginnings has a baby on it. So they could be, could be gossiping about that. But like the other big thing that I'm feeling like they're gossiping about is that you look so amazing and you look so happy. You know, like you just have a this glow about you, this smile on your face, and you seem to be like so at peace and like so, like you have so much wisdom. Like whereas maybe in the past, they only experienced a version of you where you were in this mouse energy or the four of swords where you were tied. And it was like, there was a lot of anxiety inside you. And now you're being free to be who you truly are and not be in this energy of um, imprisonment, right? Like you, I think that it's not that there's never any like bad stuff that happens in your life. You just handle it totally different. You just realize that when somebody is triggered by you and they try and like wear you down or they're causing trying to cause conflict you're like this is a them issue not a me issue so I'm just gonna go to my <clears throat> excuse me my happy place and I'm gonna hang out with my amazing friends that love and support me and I'm gonna do my like my hobbies or I'm gonna work on my business I'm gonna do things that make me feel full of joy I'm gonna spend time in nature I'm gonna ground and I'm gonna let it roll off my back, right? Water off a duck's back because, you know, like if they, if you just choose to not react or let it affect you, then it won't, right? And, and it actually ends up affecting them even deeper, like, because then they get even more in their shadow because they feel like frustrated that you're not reacting. Eventually what that will do is it will lead them to a place where they have to have their own awakening and they snap out of it, right? Which is a benefit to them, right? Like I was saying before, we learn the most from the pain. So even if it's, you know, hard for them, it will benefit them in the long run. So what advice do you have for pile number three? Yes, one more card. Oh, you got, you guys are lucky you got three cards. Okay. So the first card that came out is surrender to the divine full moon. We, if you're seeing this reading when I post it, we just had the, um, full moon in Virgo. And, uh, this is talking about manifestations coming to bloom. And oh my God, these are all full moon cards. You are like fully in your power. You got uh, the end of a tough cycle approaches, full moon in Capricorn, which is all about our financial wealth to like building financial stability. And you also got the answers you need are coming, full moon in Gemini. And Gemini is all about balance. So for many of you, this has to do with money. You left a job you started a new endeavor, or maybe you're like, I don't know what I want to do, but I know I don't want to do whatever I was doing before. It's coming. The answers are coming to you and it's going to like explode. If you've been working on a business and it hasn't been taking off and you're like, oh my God, did I make the biggest decision or did I make the worst decision I ever could have made in my life? Did I make the biggest mistake is what I wanted to say. And, um, no, absolutely not. They were giving you an opportunity to heal, recharge before this major manifestation comes into play for you. Like the energy I'm getting, because they keep saying super moon to me, which means that this is like imminent. Like it's really going to come into your life really, really soon. 
and the the energy of the divine feminine again because the the twins here are both females um wow this is so 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 intense i absolutely love this and again it's all about speaking your truth because gemini is an air sign so talking about communication and capricorn is an earth sign so you've either manifested what you want and now it's coming in to manifest like you've spoken it into life what you wanted by manifesting it or you've taken active steps in the physical world to create balance and you've done real world things to possibly create a business and it's going to like now freaking take off. All you've got to do is have faith, right? Surrender to the divine. Have faith, even if it's like hard, because I understand, honestly, like I, I had to do something very similar to this where I left my career where I'd been working in fashion for like 20 years to then embark on doing my spiritual work full time that I hadn't even been sharing with anyone because when I did, they just dismissed it. So I really identify with this story. I had a lot of shadow people around me and like people that were in their shadow and I had to just have faith. And it was really hard because you know, especially when there's long periods of time where you're not seeing anything come to fruition, right? You know, you've planted your seeds, but you're not seeing them break through the crust of the earth. And then all of a sudden it will happen, right? Like I just had a manifestation. I'm now at a thousand subscribers. Like that's incredible. I'm so grateful. And I couldn't have done it without you guys. So let me get one final card for you guys with some last piece of advice you would like. There we go. Oh, nice. So you got the triple moon, embracing all aspects of yourself, the divine and the earthly. So the um, triple moon is connected to the triple moon goddess, which is feminine energy. It's very similar to this three of cups. And it's talking about the phases of the moon and manifestation, and it's connected to intuition. And this is talking about listening to your higher self, your guides, and rooting things into the earth. So it's like exactly what we've been talking about. Just keep going. Just keep going. Have faith. Lean on your friends or pour yourself into your hobbies. Um, and really practice self-care, like taking breaks from what you're doing and distracting yourself because it's like um, a watched pot never boils. If you're like constantly, like say with social media, if you're constantly checking to see how many subscribers you have or how many views you've had or something like that, it will take a very long time for things to start to improve and, and gain steam because it's like you're encouraging the universe to keep it slow because every time you see that maybe the numbers didn't change or they only changed a little bit you're like oh well that's manifest that's part of this energy that I was just talking about like 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 you're um you know the people the five of wands people that they're like jealous of you. So they keep reinforcing that they want to keep in the energy of being jealous. If you like, if you, you could switch it, you could look at it all the time and be like, yay, I have this many subscribers. Yay. Even if the number hasn't changed, right? That could really work for you. So you could try that as well. Definitely try and work with the cycles of the moon, right? Like full moon manifestations would be a major, major, major thing for you. You can release, like do a manifestation ritual to release things on the full moon because then the moon is slowly becoming smaller and smaller and smaller, right? Waning moon. Um, and then on the new moon, you start manifesting because it's a waxing moon. It's slowly getting larger and larger and larger. But on full moons, big things will start shifting and changing for you. I hope you guys enjoyed the reading. Please um, subscribe to the channel and comment below so you can be part of the free reading giveaway. 
share this with somebody else you know that might want to participate in that as well and I do do readings on my website as well as Reiki and I just launched actually Akashic Records readings past life readings so you might want to check out my website odessamall.com I am so grateful to know you guys. I am so thrilled to connect with you and I look forward to doing the next reading. Have a great day, take care.